In this video, I want to show you how I created the game tic-tac-toe for my 3D printed robotic arm. First of all, I had to find the location of the objects. Secondly, I had to identify the game board. And lastly, I had to teach the robot to make the best move possible. The first thing to do is to find the objects. The camera is mounted on the tool of the robot, in this case, a vacuum tool. Let's picture two objects on a table. The green outline represents the view of the camera. To find the objects, I use the OpenC library to detect their locations. This library returns the X and Y coordinates, as well as the width and height of the objects. To find the center of the objects, we simply add half of the width to the X position and half of the height to the Y position. Now I know the location of the objects in pixels, but I need to know the location in millimeters. For this, I need a conversion value of millimeters per pixel, which is not a standard value and depends on the height of the camera. So, I had to calibrate the robot. I made a virtual square inside the video of the camera that needs to match the calibration square on the table. There are two sizes of squares on the table, and for both, I need to determine the height of the camera. When I know the two heights, I can calculate the ratio between the X delta and the H delta. Once I have this ratio, I can calculate the millimeters per pixel for a certain height. Here you can see me calibrating the robot as I have explained before, by finding the right height for the two squares on the table. Now that I know the number of pixels per millimeter, I can calculate the position of the objects relative to the center of the camera. Finally, I can add this distance to the position of the camera, giving me the positions of the objects relative to the origin of the robot. The next step is to find the game board. I don't want to give a specific location for the game board. I want the robot to find it itself. I did this by placing the four cornerstones. The robot will then scan the area, and if it finds the four corner stones, it can calculate the location of the columns and rows of the board. The last step is to determine the best move for the robot arm. For this, I use the Minimax algorithm. The Minimax algorithm is a decision-making algorithm used in artificial intelligence and game theory. It works by exploring all possible moves in the game, simulating the outcome of each move, and choosing the one that maximizes the robot's advantage while minimizing the opponent's potential advantage. At the top of the pyramid, you have the current state of the game board. The algorithm will look at every possible move, simulating each one. It then evaluates the outcomes of these moves and assigns points to each possible solution. This evaluation helps determine the best move for the robot to make, ensuring it chooses the most advantageous option based on the overall game strategy. After I had determined the algorithm, I made the program in Python to test it before programming it in the software of the robot. Now it's time to program the robot in Mikobot Studio. Since my last video about Mikobot Studio, I have made a lot of changes. The biggest change is that you can run the program field as a Python program now. So, if we say equals 10, B equals 20, and print A plus B, T returns 30. Because of this change we are able to run more complex programs, like tic-tac-toe. Also, I have added more libraries with some explanation about it. So for example in the robot library you will find all the functions that you can do with this library. The same goes for the other libraries. But let's program the tic-tac-toe. First we define the vacuum tool and the button, and all the libraries that we need. We start with finding the game board, so we have to move the robot to a certain position where it is able to see the board. Next. The robot will calculate the best move and will return the X and Y position where the stone needs to go to. The robot will move to a predefined position where the robot can find its stones. The robot will pick up a stone and bring it to the right position. After the move the robot will check again if the move is a winning move. Until one has made a winning move, or the board is full. After that, we define the player's turn, here we have to wait until the player has made a move and has pressed the button. 
When the button is pressed the robot will check if the move is a winning move. If it is a winning move the game will end. Now it's time to start playing. I start with outlining the game board by placing the four red cornerstones. The robot will scan this board and knows now the location of the game board. After this, the game can start. May the best one win.